The losing streak reaches four as a listless Heat team scored just 88 points versus the Denver Nuggets. They held Nikola Jokic just 12 points, but it was Denver's role players who fed off the MVP throughout the game, leaving Miami to look mediocre at best and completely lost. A terrible effort by a team that needed a win. How did Denver dismantle the Heat? We'll break it all down on today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are locked on Heat. Your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucanheat.com. Joining me as always, it's longtime NBA reporter David Ramil. However, you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Recording this on Wednesday night from Kaseya Center after the Heat. Loose to the Nuggets, 100 to 88. They have now dropped four straight games. They are a game and a half out of the sixth seed. Firmly now in the eighth seed. They're still three games back of the four seed, which seems like a pipe dream now. With 17 games left in the season. There's so much to get to from this one, David. Um, we talk about the three-point shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, the latest injury update, sort of non-update regarding Tyler Hero. I do want to get to some of the silver linings from this one, specifically in regards to Bam. But we got to start with Jimmy Butler, uh, who was a no-show in this one. You couldn't have really asked for a better way for this game to play out, right? You held Denver to 100 points. You held Nikola Jokic to 12 points. You look at those kinds of things and you'd say... Hey, let me give you that. Do you think that he can win this game? And you go into this and be like, yeah, absolutely. If those were the, if that's the setting, I feel like the Heat would win this game. And instead, they score just 88 points. The three-point shooting was a problem. But to me, the number one problem was just another Jimmy Butler no-show. And he's he was a reason why they've lost three straight games going into this one. He's a big reason why they lost this one, even though... Like, the opportunity was there. This game was there for the taking, specifically for Jimmy in the beginning of that fourth quarter, and he just couldn't get it done. It seems like there's a growing sentiment that Denver has Jimmy's number. Mm. And I'm not sure if it's the physicality of Aaron Gordon or Contavious Caldwell-Pope or whatever of the matchups that might present a challenge for Jimmy in terms of his inability to get a good scoring game in there. But there was wide open looks available to him that he just couldn't capitalize. Whether it was a baseline jumper, a shot at the rim, a smoke layup here and there that he could have absolutely converted. I'm not sure what it is, but he did play an extremely subpar game. We talked about this opportunity for Miami to make a statement. Well, the statement is, we're just not good enough. And I think that's exactly what happened. They, they, They made a statement, all right. It's that they are not good enough to contend with a really good Nuggets team. I think my biggest takeaway of all that, uh, this whole game, was Denver's damn good. If we didn't know that by now because, you know, they won a championship, they have maintained their excellence throughout this season. They're a very, very good team. They're they're making a purpose out of every opportunity, and they really – they just did not let up on Miami. Like, you know, there was even for, for, well, let's say three quarters. They had a lead early in the first quarter, then they converted in the fourth quarter as well. They just shut down Miami, and, and they did a really good job of taking them away from everything that makes them comfortable, whether it's Jimmy Butler, whether it's getting to the free throw line, whether it's getting three-point opportunities. Denver took all that away from Miami. I don't know. I, I, guess what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is I felt like the Heat were in this game. They were only down one going into the fourth quarter. I, 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 they held Denver to 100 points, you know, and this is after in Denver holding, to, holding them to, what, 104 points? Like, this team... I don't look. The Nuggets are the best team in the NBA. I think we've all gathered that. They're the team to beat. They are the defending champs, and I they're my pick to come out of the West for a reason. For sure. Um, but I do think the Heat play them well. Like considering that they are able to hold this team, they've they've been able to hold Nikola Jokic now to fewer than twenty points and an ineffective games. Like he had what was it thirteen or um, fourteen rebounds and six assists and twelve points. Like that's a bad game for Nikola Jokic. And it was very similar when these teams met in Denver a couple of weeks ago. It just feels like they have figured out between all the film work and all the everything that they've mm-hmm. gathered since June and everything, like they have put themselves in position to at least get the to win these games. And yet in each of these games, Jimmy Butler has fallen short. Like the the, the groundwork is there. It's set. The blueprint is there. It just needs a little Jimmy Butler stamp of approval and he's been a no show. 
in this game and in the game before and in the last four games for Miami overall. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that was the most disappointing thing for me is that this game was winnable. They go into the fourth quarter again, down 72 to 71, and, and Jimmy Butler is in the game, and Nikola Jokic out of the game. Nikola Jokic takes his rest at the beginning of the fourth quarter for the first three or four minutes of that of the quarter. And Jimmy Butler's in the game. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, like this is the chance. This is the chance for the Heat to grab this game by the throat and specifically for Jimmy Butler to do it. Instead, he misses a six foot layup. He passes out of a shot right at the basket to go to Patty Mills in the corner who misses a three pointer from there. Yes. Uh, he misses another fadeaway jumper. And it was just miss after miss after miss. And you just expect more from Jimmy in that moment, right? That's the killer instinct. That's what, that's what playoff Jimmy is all about. And I, I know it's not the playoffs right now, but this game mattered. It was it was Miami's last chance to make a to make a statement, a statement win, like you referred to earlier. Yeah. And I would have thought that Jimmy would have rose to the occasion, and he didn't. And I don't know why. I guess that's where I'm at now. It's like it's not for a lack of want to. I'm I'm done with that. Like this game had to mean something to him. So what was it? No, I, I don't think it was. I mean, I, I I think he did not go into this game with that kind of mindset of wanting to establish this. I, I think. You know, we saw all these moments from him over the last few weeks where he did seem like playoff Jimmy. Instead, over the last four games, it's been the exact opposite of that, a guy who's very pedestrian at best. So I'm not sure that he understood what was at stake here. Or, I mean, on a, on a cognitive level, absolutely he understood it, but I don't think that he was as fully engaged as we've seen from him over spurts over the regular season. I don't know. I don't know. I know, again – Denver does a really good job defensively. They have multiple wing defenders that are physical, that are long, that can challenge Jimmy. He can't just get those easy looks. He can't out-muscle people. He can't bully his way to the basket. And I think that's a big part. There, I, there was one, I think, layup that he got on Jamal Murray where he was able to kind of elbow him out of the way. And aside from that, he tried that – I was going to say something. I was going to say an expletive there. He tried that stuff on uh, Aaron Gordy. He tried it on KCP. Didn't work. So he's just he's found a team that can take away those opportunities from him, and I he just was not, not nearly aggressive enough. Eric Spolster talked about this after the game, um, and it's something that you and I have kind of talked about a little bit. There's a difference between driving into to the basket and seeking to score, and driving to the basket and trying to draw a foul. And Eric Spolster wouldn't say it so verbatim, but he did sort of make reference to or suggest that maybe Jimmy Butler needs to stop looking to draw the contact and yep. get to the line and just go that. score the ball. And, and I do think that that's part of it. You know, when Jimmy Butler is – and that's the part I don't really understand. It's like why during – why when the Heat are winning 11 of 14 is Jimmy Butler engaged into playoff Jimmy mode? And why is he decided to downshift – now it's not like the heat it's not like he won all those games and the heat were sitting pretty the heat still had a lot of work to do in the standings the free throw disparities i think is a big part of it and uh, eric spolster has hinted at it a couple of times now like you know i he said i don't know if i got a memo i don't know if a memo was sent to me or not but it seems like a league-wide change here where free throws are specifically being called yes they're allowing defenses Good. to get more up of an opportunity because those scores were outlandish there was a lot of complaints kind of peaking right before or at all-star break and since then they've really allowed teams to be much more physical today's game was to your point earlier a very physical one it was a playoff intensity for most of it until late in the game when denver kind of just blew the doors open but so uh, jimmy just has to adjust to the way officials are calling the games now he's not going to get the easy eight to ten points that he gets yeah. at the line that that was like the, the staple there he could go six of you know 18 from the floor Two free but he throws could get, tonight yeah. yeah but he could get 10 free throws and all of a sudden those numbers look much better He's not going to be able to take those opportunities if they're going to be able to maintain it. it you know, I don't know. I, I talked about this on Locked NBA. Typically, we don't see these points of emphasis emphasized in the middle of the goddamn season. It starts in October. It's, you know, an edict that comes from on high over the off season. The next thing you know, you're implemented. And by December, January, maybe those numbers are curtailed a little bit. And then by playoffs, it's all forgot altogether. But to start this lack of free throw calls in the middle of the season like this, it's a little bizarre. I don't know if Jimmy's, ball, if Jimmy's going to adjust. I don't know if he's ever going to get these opportunities at the line. And if not, he's going to have to find a way to be the very highest level of, his, of who he, he can, can do be. it. He can score without the like the, the draw drifting the for the free throws. Yes, yeah. we know he can. He's got moves. Yes. He's got the spin move. He's got the fadeaway. He could do but that, that takes stuff. takes energy but and I focus, and I don't know that he had Less energy tonight. than running into huge, enormous basketball, seven-foot basketball players. It feels like, hey, just take a few more three-pointers. Like, just score. Just go. To score, and they I took do, away I, the three-pointers. So, I mean, they took away everybody's three-pointers. He, he didn't have those opportunities. No, we should talk about that here. Um, also, we're also going to talk about 
get to some of your listener questions, talk about whether or not the Heat are missing Tyler Hero. Uh, we'll talk about the Bam Jokic matchup. We'll get to all that here after this on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy. It's America's number one fantasy sports app with 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. You just pick more than or less than the stat projections on two to six players and you watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app and right now if you go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown nba and use the code lockdown nba for a first deposit match of up to 100 dollars. that's a first deposit match of up to 100 dollars, but only if you go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown nba and use the code lockdown nba remember go to price picks pick more pick less it's that easy Thanks again for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. In previewing this game, David, the, the one stat that I really wanted to keep track of was the three-point shooting and specifically the amount, the attempts that the Heat got off. They they got off fewer attempts than Denver when these two teams played in Denver. I looked at that and I said, look, you're not going to outscore the Nuggets in the paint. You're just not. Not with Jokic, not with Aaron Gordon, not with Jamal Murray. You're just not going to outscore them in the paint. So how can you kind of even the, the and, and kind of even the tables here and the three point shoot the, the three-point shot is the great equalizer. And I thought that the Heat left a lot on the table in that first game in Denver. I don't know how much they left on the table in this game or if this was more of Denver taking those shots away, making con- a concerted effort to run Miami's shooters off the line. But I also know that the Heat looked very discombobulated. It was maybe the, the most disorganized quarter and a half that I've seen from Miami yeah. all season long. It, you would think a team having lost three straight and a bad one at home to the Wizards would have, and, and with fresh off of a, a good practice on Tuesday would have came into this yeah. with a plan. And it just... It didn't really feel like they had a plan. Uh, to start the game, they had Bam Adebayo bringing the ball up, and I was like, okay, that's interesting, engaging Jokic early on the defensive end. But it kind of reminded me like in the NFL where you kind of script your first dozen or so plays, and then after that everything goes haywire and you kind of lose the plot. Yeah. And that's what it felt like. The first three or four possessions, I liked what I was seeing. The process was good. And then the Heat offense just crumbled and, and into uh, this just disorganized mush of nothing. Like, yes. and, and you couldn't really understand what they were trying to get to. And I think that set a bad precedent did. early in the game and did. one that they could never get back from. No, no, it absolutely did. You saw Duncan with wide open looks that he couldn't knock down. And, and that's, you know, normal. It happens over the course of the game. But from that point forward, it seemed like Miami's offense was just lost. Like it would have... I, I look at it as like the, that first domino that would have fallen that kind of might have unlocked mm. the rest of Miami's offense because from there, everything just seemed to fall apart. Like those were wide open looks generated with purpose, with intent, all the things that we hear Eric Spolster talking about. He got those wide open looks, but he just wasn't able to knock them down. The only, they went one of six in the first quarter from three-point range with the only one being a very lucky Jimmy Butler corner three-point yes. shot. Other than that, it you know there were wide open looks that they just weren't able to knock down. There's no grease on these wheels. There's no offense. It's not rolling. It's just, it's just, it's very stuck in the mud and not in a positive way. Eric loves talking <laughs> about it being stuck in the mud and these are the kinds of games that we can win, but you still need some fluidity. He you wants, he movement. wants the game in the mud, but you want to be moving through the mud, like kind of like a mud party, like a mud bath, but you don't really want to be stuck in the mud. No. Yeah. I mean, they did nothing. They, they were not able to get anything going. There were moments there in that first quarter when again, they were generating looks, whether it was Bam or yeah. Jimmy or anybody else. They were not able to convert. Two of six from Jimmy Butler in the first quarter. One of four from Bam. One of four from Duncan. Like, that's not going to cut it. No. If you start off that badly, you're not going to be able to find the offense. And from there, it, it just kind of, they changed. To their credit, if there's a positive here, they evolved their offense a little bit. They didn't take any three-point shots. They weren't able to convert those with the exception of the third quarter where they had a lead for most of it. But they just weren't really able to knock down that shot. And from there, their offense just can't generate enough points. This was, they only attempted 21 three-point attempts 
in tonight's game. That's tied for the lowest amount that they've tried all season long. Mm-hmm. And they shot those at a really poor rate, obviously, just 24%. Yeah, That's 5 of 21, kind of, no. Yeah. They took, thir- to me, the more instructive number is 13 three-point attempts through the first three quarters. Hmm. That was before they just started chucking them in yeah. the fourth quarter to get Let's back hope. into this it, in the second half of the fourth quarter. Yeah, desperation. Um, 13 three-pointers, attempts, not makes, 13 three-point attempts in three quarters of NBA basketball in the year 2024 is absolutely unheard of. I started searching. You were right next to me on Media Row. Like, what's the lowest amount of three-point attempts in a game in 2024? It would have been down there with one of the five fewest three-point attempt rates in the league in a game this season. And so, um, yeah, you have to credit Denver a little bit. Yeah. But that's also not just all the nuggets. Like, it, it's one thing to keep a team to, like, 29 for three-point attempts. But to what to, for 13 through three quarters before desperation time, um, that's that's also on the Miami Heat. And this is a team that I know Jimmy Butler and Bam are going to do most of their work in the paint. But they also need those three-point attempts to, to loosen things up for Absolutely. Jimmy and Bam. And Absolutely. when you've got Duncan going one for six... Um, you've got Terry Rozier 0 for 3, Caleb Martin 1 for 3, Patty Mills 0 for 3. Um, I, they just they weren't making shots, sure, mm-hmm. but even if they had made half of their 13 attempts through three quarters, this game would have been over. You know, like it, I don't know how much it would have helped. So they just need to get more attempts up, and, and it felt like that should have been part of the game plan. And it just and if I could see it, I know that Eric Spolstra and the Heat's coaching staff and the Heat players saw it. And so I, I guess I just keep going back to what happened. Why weren't they able to, to kind of execute on a game plan uh, with all due credit to the Nuggets that you have to give them? Um, can we talk a little bit, though, about uh, Bam Adebayo in this game? Because if there was a silver lining, I think it was Bam, unless we want to keep – unless you got more negatives that you want to get to. I, I don't know. I, I don't know where to separate, like, those individual performances from an overall – kind of just really bleh feeling about the team in general. So I guess if there's nothing specific, and again, without the Well, how concerned are you? Let's, we can zoom out a little bit. Four-game losing streak now. Uh, s- slipping in the standings, losing ground uh, a little bit now where the fourth seed and maybe home court advantage in the first round seemed like a possibility a week ago. It no longer does. Um, I guess tech- mathematically it still is. But the Heat are now three games out of the fourth seed. They're a game and a half out of the sixth seed. I still believe in this team climbing out of it. Uh, and, and, and keeping a number six and, and staying in the top six in the East or getting up there. Mm. But they can't take these games for granted. They cannot play with their food. Uh, this is what happened last year, and they ended up in the play-in tournament. And I know they took the eighth seed and went all the NBA finals, but they lost the first play-in game to Atlanta, and they were a Max Drews eruption away from losing to Chicago in the second play-in game. They don't want to be there. They were distraught by the fact that they were there last year, okay? Uh, and they don't want to be there this year, but... I. How much confidence do you have in this team turning it around after losing four straight? I'm a little concerned. Um, I think they're going to have a lot more challenges there than you might expect. Like, you can't look at this Detroit Pistons team and say, you know what, they're going to be able to just go over and blow them out. Like, I'm looking at this right now even as you're talking. Denver, the second, the team with, that allows the second fewest three-point attempts on a per-game basis at just 31. Third, le- third least three-point attempts per game, the Detroit Pistons. So <laughs> they're going to keep you from shooting the three as easily. Right. And I think that's going to be a problem for Miami because, again, so much of their offense is generated off of this inside-out game where if you have those shots falling down, it keeps the space a little bit open for Jimmy and Bam to be able to work a little bit more effectively, a little bit more freely. I don't know. As far as the overall big picture, I think Miami can turn it around. But I have to admit, I'm a little surprised that they came out with less energy today yeah. without a, a sense of purpose. Like This is a very atypical for this team. They need Jimmy Butler back playing at an all-NBA level. It was the biggest reason why they won 11 out of 14 games, and it's the biggest reason why they've dropped four games in a row is because Jimmy Butler's downshifted back into regular season pre-All-Star break, Jimmy. And if I don't, he, if he's it, sa- Is he saving it? I don't think he's saving it. I don't think that you're just like, you know what, I'm going to jump a little less high on this floater that I'm about to miss because I'm saving it no, for the playoffs. Not. Like, no, I, right. you know, like you and I are sitting there watching this game. I was like, you don't got the legs right now. Six of 16. Like it's, it, I think, I mean, it's just I think he needs it. to change the mentality. Stop looking for the foul calls and looking for the whistles and, and just go to score games against Detroit two back to back games against Detroit coming up this weekend should help like that. If there is a silver lining of this four game losing streak, Maybe. it's that you lost a game to Dallas. Who's a good team. 
the Thunder, who are an awesome team, the Nuggets, who are the best team in the league, the one the one loss is the Wizards' loss. If you don't lose that Wizards game, you feel a little bit less bad about it, but they did lose that Wizards game, and we do feel bad about it. So uh, that's where the Heat are, I guess, right now. I still... I still remain hopeful that they can they can turn I like they they tend to turn things around on the road. They got four games on the road coming up. So get out of Miami, get on the road, become the villains again, go out there, get the let's go heat chance happening in the opposing arenas, do all the things that you usually do and then come back and then lose a game at home again. So that's 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 been the pattern all season for this team. Uh, if you could figure it out, congrats, because I can't. Uh, coming up, we get to your listener questions, including did Bam actually outplay Nikola Jokic? In this game, we'll talk about that next here on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from another retirement account with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good just through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees do apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one from 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Thanks again for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. If you're watching the show on YouTube, make sure to like the video. Hit that subscribe button while you're watching. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think about the Miami Heat's four-game losing streak and whether or not they can turn it around. But let's get to some listener questions sent in on Twitter. Thanks to everybody who used the hashtag AskLOHeat. You can email us, LockedOnHeat at gmail.com. We're on Instagram on Locked on Heat. This question comes from Kyle, who writes in, Bam made a three-pointer. Are we going to have the Bam should try more threes conversation again? Personally, I'm for it. I think the Heat's biggest flaw is that Jimmy and Bam are their two best, but don't space the floor. Anything from three from either is an upgrade. Are we going to have the Bam should try more threes convo again? Uh, No, because it's not going to make any difference. He's not going to shoot him. I'm not sure if it's, again, by an edict from Eric Spolster and the coaching staff or if it's just a lack of confidence on his part. Uh, I would have thought that he would be much more comfortable at this point in his career with a three-point shot, and he has shown a slight uptick over the course of the season, just not nearly enough. The the three-point shot looked good, and even I pointed out to you before, the, the play before that, the possession before that, he had kind of flared out to the corner, something atypical that he does not normally do. Mm-hmm. And I thought maybe they were designing a play to get him a wide open shot from the corner It wind up not uh, resulting in a three point attempt then, but in the next ensuing possession, then he does get the ball and he won't knock it down. So uh, I'm open for it. I think anything that will, again, provide some space and, and help uh, clear the room for guys like Tyler when he returns and Jimmy Butler, of course. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Other than that, I, 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 I disagree that the conversation is not going to help. We're the media, right? We hold truth to power. That's our job, isn't it? Like, let's keep asking for Bam to take more threes. Did you ask it's... about this last year, and Eric Spolster <laughs> kind of gave you a dirty look. And I'm going to ask about it again this year. I asked Jimmy about it in training camp, and he's like, nope, I'm not going to shoot more threes. And what happened? He ended up shooting more threes. Did I have something to do with it? Possibly. We can't say I didn't. We don't know for sure. Uh, <laughs> we don't know for certain. All right, I suppose. So I'm going to keep harping on it, man. Like, 17 seconds left on the shot clock. Nikola Jokic playing way off of him. Bam's got the ball. You don't have to call up Duncan Robinson for some dribble handoff thing. Go ahead and just shoot that puppy. Let it go. And he did. And he made it. And he made it during the All-Star game when Eric Spolster wasn't around. And I loved it then. And I love it now. He shoots him during a, a Miami uh, Pro League over the summers. He shoots threes yes. uh, like he's Carl Anthony Towns, or at least with the same frequency, maybe not at the same rate. But... Um, I'm here for it. He does need to take them. If Jimmy's ticking up a little bit more and Bam's ticking up a little bit more, I don't expect either of them to become prolific three-point shooters. But if they're just taking a... If if Bam took as many as Jimmy does, which is to say two or three a game sometimes, that would make all the difference in Miami's offense, especially when they can apparently be susceptible to only taking 21 three-pointers. So I'm glad that one of them, at least tonight, was from Bam. Staying on Bam, Mike writes in, did Bam outplay Jokic tonight? No. I, I can't. I can't get to that point. I really want to. I, and I think you know 
Bam's early game struggles were kind of, uh, you know, they were kind of wiped clean by his run late in the game. Well, I guess it was the third quarter when he yeah. went on a little mini run after the three-pointer. He wound up having a nice uh, turnaround jump hook in the lane. He looked much more engaged from that point. He just seemed like he was, you know, much, the Bam that we've come gotten used to seeing this season. I, with with Jokic, I, I, my, my feeling is, yeah, you held him to 12 points. My feeling is also – he didn't give a damn, and he could have turned it on at any <laughs> point if he wanted to. Yeah. And uh, I think, you okay. know, he was getting everybody else going. Like, Michael Porter Jr. had a shot going. Aaron Gordon had a shot going. Like at that Only point 25 time, points for Michael Porter Jr. this time. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I guess that's a positive. <laughs> you want to look better at it better than from 30. Perspective. But, I mean, everybody else contributed in that starting lineup that yeah. was playing alongside Joker. And I think he could just turn it on if he has to. So, I guess from the statistical line, you all look at it that way and say, "Yeah, sure, Bam outplayed him, but don't don't give don't I wouldn't give that kind of edge over anybody over your Nikola Jokic." You mentioned the third quarter spurt. Nine of Bam's seventeen points for the game came good. in that those couple of minutes there. So he hits the three pointer, and that's sort of what sets up the the rest of that run. He he finds um, he gets it step through in the low post over uh, through Michael Porter Jr. Yes. in a beautiful, like, Jaime Hacquez type move. Yes. Uh, he gets a pass, like, this beautiful uh, high-low pass to Duncan Robinson for a reverse layup. Uh, gets a layup through traffic where it was very, almost, like, kind of Terry Rozier-ish on the break looking where he just sort of reaches yeah. and, and, and kind of just lays it up softly. And so those were the nine points in the third quarter, and it's why Miami entered the fourth quarter down only one. Um I think Bam's defense, to me, uh, did he outplay Nikola Jokic? I know that was the question. It's not a wholly interesting question to me, so I'm going to ignore it. But I do think that Bam's defense against Jokic is the best in the league. And Eric Spolster talked about it after the game. He said, like, nobody goes toe-to-toe with Jokic like Bam does. And I think... I don't think he said that. I, I mean, you'd have to go back to it. I think what he said was nobody else embraces the competition of going up against yes, him. Yes, I think, and that's, yes, you're right. And That doesn't mean he succeeds. Like, he no. didn't succeed in the final. Nobody succeeds. Well, that's the whole point then. So, but know, he does can't. a good – I think he does as good a job as anybody in the league at almost succeeding. That's like, yeah. If Jokic you, is unsolvable. If, if He's the best a, player in the league. If like, you're a mosquito and you – you know, if there's 29 other mosquitoes to attack Nikola Jokic, he's the one that annoys him the most? Correct. Either way, you're still a goddamn mosquito who gives a shit. I mean, <laughs> I, honestly, like, I mean, Bam is the best defensive player in the NBA, and I've said that a number of times, and he's basically nothing in comparison to Nikola Jokic. All right, moving on. Tyler Hero, then. Uh, our next question comes from King Crown 123 When is Tyler Hero coming back? We sure do miss 14. Uh, on a night where you only scored 88 points, which is a point I don't think we've harped on enough in this show, the Miami Heat scored 88 points. In the game, and the Nuggets have quietly become a better defense than Miami. Uh -huh. I think if you ask just a casual basketball fan that doesn't pay attention no. to defensive rating, they'd be like, who's the better defensive team? The Heat, obviously. They're the Miami Heat, and these are the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> nope, Nuggets are slightly better in defensive rating than the Miami Heat are after this game, and it has been trending in that direction basically since the All-Star break. Um, so that's a problem um, for Miami, and I guess it's good for Denver in their championship run here. Uh, but they did miss Tyler Hero on a night where you only scored 88 points. I think that... I, yeah, I don't. I don't know that I need to offer much more analysis than that. No, I mean the pull up threes, the yeah. opportunity there. Like I mean, we're we're talking about twenty one three point attempts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would have made a difference to have Tyler right there. I know he can operate a lot from the mid range game. Maybe they would have taken that away from him. You know, we're, we're just we haven't seen Tyler up against Denver in the finals. We didn't see Tyler in the two games this season. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know how much of a difference he would have made. I think he would have been. A positive one and benefit and benefiting Miami. Fortunately, we'll never get a chance to find out unless these two teams make in the NBA Finals, which seems a little less likely at this point. Uh, they got to get out of the playing tournament. I'd feel a lot better about it at that point. But um, Tyler Hero, a non-injury injury update from Eric Spolstra before the game. He was asked about Tyler Hero's progress, and he said that he is making progress and that he's doing quote all the right. Things. What does that mean? Nobody knows. So that's the Tyler Hero update. Still no update also on Kevin Love. Um, and so those are your your, your daily non-update injury updates from the Miami Heat. And that is also it for us tonight. Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on your podcast app.